Good morning everyone and welcome to Stretford Paddock. This is your Friday morning news. I am Alex as always bringing you here. Um, how's everyone doing? Um, yeah, how's everyone getting on? How's everyone getting on with lockdown? Is everyone getting back to normal and stuff? Uh, make sure you're getting your questions in throughout the video. I'll try and answer them as much as I can throughout. Thanks everyone for joining. Yeah, again, Friday morning, we've got some news. Strange, I'm not going to talk about Paul Pogba today, um, which is a bit of a difference, but Said we are talking about this man, about Felipe Coutinho. Uh, apparently, United have been offered him. This is a report by ESPN. Um, this is a strange one. This is, you know, this one's kind of been rumbling around the past 12, 18 months now. It looks like Barcelona definitely want to get rid of him. Uh, room in the in the article, it's uh, they've got they have a massive wage bill and i think the article said that only to stegen messi and i believe it was um frankie de jong they're the only players that aren't up for sale i think they need to clear out they need to get everything go they get to kind of do this rebuild because i think they're all preparing for they're preparing to transition away from this the messi suarez era and then the and the javi and yesterday era is kind of coming to an end now so i think they're trying to transition away from that and they need to get off the wage bill. And Coutinho is one of the ones that they thought was going to take over uh, and take over the mantle, but that hasn't really worked out for them. You know, he's been off and on loan to Bayern Munich, and it's not really worked from there either. So they're kind of stuck with him at the moment, and they're, by the looks of things, offering him all over the place. This has been picked up by a couple of the local places as well, and saying that I think Leicester City are one of the teams that are looking at him, but I don't see them. I think they're going to want to try and get as much as possible for him and try and get you know they paid 110 million for the man so they're gonna want as much as possible and i think united are one of the clubs that they know have that kind of money around obviously looking for another forward um but i don't i don't see it happening i don't see it fitting uh i don't think especially if you're going to spend over 100 million on a player you know and Jaden sancho's up there 19 year old exciting talent to a 27 year old that's played 40 games in the past couple of seasons because he's not really wanted so I don't really see this one happening um by the sounds of it as well that they uh I think Ollie said no to this you know it's, it's not a player that, that fits the fits the bill for for what we're looking for he's not a, a young hungry player that wants to get in so you know it looks like uh Coutinho is going to get offered around all summer I think he's going to be wanted to move on by Barcelona I don't think he'll stay there it's where he goes. I think he wants to come back to the Premier League. I think Chelsea was probably the big one for him, but I think the Ziyech transfers kind of put a stop to that. Um, I think Leicester City, I think, would take him, but again, it's whether they can afford him. And then there's, of course, there's, there's Arsenal um, are probably in there as well, but again, money-wise, whether he would fit into their system and fit into their wage bracket, I don't know. But obviously, there's going to be constant talks about Philippe Coutinho United are always put in the mix to up the price, whether he's going here or not. So he'll keep being up up there. But no, what do you think? Do you think he would fit at all? Do you know? Do you think if if San if we don't get Sancho, is he is he a replacement? Could he fit in on that right hand side? What what do you guys reckon at all? There's been a lot of there's a lot of no's in there. There's a lot of I wouldn't want him personally. Um, you know. Someone said maybe Newcastle. Yeah, who knows with all this going on. Uh, there's loads of people saying no. I think there's a few people before the video even started saying thanks, but no thanks. And that's kind of the, the thing for Manchester United. I think they're going to turn that down. Don't think they're going to take up that offer. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't see this happening at all. But, you know, we're going to get linked to him consistently until he moves somewhere else because that's what United are there. That's what United will be, be there for. That's what they're going to do, you know. Um, that's what the papers do. So, well, let's see how that one goes. Um, let's have a look at the number two uh, article I've got for you today. The second article I've got for you today is regarding... It was a Mourinho t um, target, and it's a guy called Pellegrini. And he went from uh, he went from Genoa to, to Monaco for £21 million pound as a 16-year-old. As a he became the second most expensive 16-year-old ever. Um, he was the youngest ever goal scorer in Serie A. Unbelievable player. Um, by the by, the sounds of things early on, he's now moved to Monaco, and injuries have really thwarted him. Apparently, we've been tracking him since we were we were sixteen. Um, so, you know, he's been on the radar, and apparently Solskjaer said, "Let's let's take this up again." This is from Demazio. Um, so usually pretty good. 
Um, usually pretty good at these things, and they've said uh, that United are going to look into Pellegrini as, as a potential striker striking option. Um, do you know what? I mean, I've not seen much of him. Uh, by the looks of things, very, very injury prone this season. I think he's only played three or four games for, for Monaco since he's moved over. Which is obviously disappointing for someone that you've spent so much money on at, at 16. But, you know, if United could get him for that similar fee, 20, 21 million, it wouldn't be too much of a risk. Um, but, you know, if, if Monaco want to get the Anthony Martial kind of fees, which... Obviously, they probably will will be looking at doing. Uh, I don't think that's going to be worth worth happening. Daniel's in the comments, huge potential but injury prone. Yeah, from what I've seen on my bit of research of him, that that looks to be the case. Um, Sixteen year old looked unbelievable, but at that point, it's just um, it's too much. It's uh, the injury prone isn't is no good. Um, but and again, it all depends on the fee for these players. Uh, Twenty one million pound he went from uh, Genoa to to Monaco. If uh, if we could get him for a similar price, I think it would be a good a good gamble, you know, considering his potential. And again, twenty one million is nothing for for clubs right now. But if we're looking at um, if we're looking at players for the fifty sixty million, if you can't be consistent, I don't think it's worth it. We've had a, we've had enough players come into United and and not fit in because of injuries and things like that. I don't think that's the option. And and there's a striker as well. You know, we've got Mason Greenwood coming through. Um, 21 year old who's not guaranteed I don't know um, I don't know whether that's the right thing uh, I'm going to jump into the comments uh, I've got 10 million for him yeah that's the that's probably what he's worth now we've put playing three games and four games in not too long um, let's have a look uh, Strefford Reds anyone who watched Coutinho for Barca he wasn't even that bad the fans just booed him and it got worse and worse they always need players to blame Spain you're right I don't think he's been that bad I think you've seen him when he's played for Brazil, uh, going back to continue, you've seen him when he played for Brazil in the 2018 World Cup and, and in other times. He still looked sharp. He still looked very good. He's one of those players that I think needs to fit into a system. I don't think he's going to be... He's not very good. He's, he's a number 10. He's an out-and-out out number 10. He needs that free role. He's not someone that's going to fit into a midfield and do the dirty work for you. He's not going to do the pressing work of the wingers, that, especially what Barcelona want of you. So... I just don't think he's fit into their, the system since they've got him. They kind of got him and, you know, when you've got Messi in that team who kind of floats and does whatever he wants, you can't have any more players doing that. So um, that's that's the problem for Coutinho. Um, you know, I'm, he won't, He was a Liverpool player. I'm not too. I'm not feeling too sorry for him. Um, but, yeah, this Pellegrini interest, um, you know, obviously they've done a very good scout report on him. So... Um, Let's let's see how that um, that plays out in the next few weeks. Maybe it's an option. I don't think they'd be looking to pay more than the twenty twenty million pound mark that that they came in for uh, a while ago. So let's see let's see how that progresses. Let's see if there's any more links in the next few weeks, and whether it is an actual whether it is an option in the next few weeks. Um, the final one, final bit of news is the kind of the forgotten trophy this season. There's been a lot of talk so far about you know. Champions League and Europa League returning. Obviously, the Premier League restart has been set for the 17th of June. But this morning, we got some news about the FA Cup. FA Cup is scheduled to return on the 27th of June, which means the, the quarterfinals are getting played. We're playing Norwich. It says away, but who knows where they, they've not confirmed where those games are going to get played or anything along those lines. They've just said that it's going to come back with the final date looking to be August 1st. You know, this is an important one for, for United um, especially, and for Solskjaer. Um, for as much as, you know, the the actual, the FA Cup doesn't really hold as much as it used to do and, you know, it doesn't get us into the Champions League, which is obviously what we want. The FA Cup is still, still silverware and it's still something that these young players that we've had come through, it would be great to see them lift a trophy. So I, I'm happy that they've... Uh, I'm happy that they've done that. I'm happy that they've kind of brought that and brought it back to the forefront because it kind of seemed like everyone was talking about these other trophies and making sure Europe got played and making sure the leagues got finished. But no one's mentioned the FA Cup and and not just for United, but for the teams like Norwich and Newcastle and and the smaller teams down there and even even Leicester City and and, and you know Leicester and Chelsea are still in there and then we've got I think City are in there and, and Arsenal and Sheffield United are in there. You know everyone is is interested in this and. Everyone has a... I, I want to get a trophy in the bag, exactly. Um, bu- buzzing that the double's back on the cards from Tom. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same. I, I'm, 
I'm hoping we get them games played, you know, as you know, and we we get to a, a semi final and a final. That would be it'd be unbelievable for Manchester United, you know. Um, the FA Cup, like I said, it, it was it's kind of lost its importance a little bit over the past few years, but still, it's still a trophy that United can, need to get, and especially with this this young team that's come through. Players haven't. It's not like it was before. It's not like these play, we've got players that have won loads of trophies. This this could be their first trophy. So um, I'm hoping that that comes back. I'm hoping we get that back. Uh, make sure you get your questions in. Before that, obviously, make sure tonight you're setting your alarms for 10 o'clock. Mr Joe Smith is around for his late night live, as always. We'll be over on the rundown tomorrow at 9 o'clock on Mr Stephen Housen's channel. So make sure you're checking that out. We've got Housen's transfer review coming up as well and a load of good things. We're all in the planning mode for Premier League coming back. Um, and if you are in the Legends tier, your your merchandise boxes got sent. So keep an eye out for them and we're sorting out next month already. Um, but yeah, would be a confidence boost for the European Cup run in August. Exactly. You know, getting that trophy in the bag would uh, would set that up. Probably going to play some big games because there's a lot of big teams left. There's only, you know, Leicester City, Chelsea, uh, City and Arsenal are still in there and Sheffield United. So there'll be big games where when we got through to the semi-final. There'll be big uh, things to do. So be huge. Um, let's see what else we've got in there. If we can kick on from where we left, adding Pogba and Rashford, we could quite easily get top three or four with two trophies. Yeah, I mean, we're three points behind Chelsea. Chelsea were in a bit of free fall, but who knows how this reset's going to kind of do for people. Everyone's going to be back. Everyone's going to be back. Same as the Tottenham game. You know, we were looking at playing them. Yes, we we lost Rashford and Pogba, but they had no players. They've now got a fully fit squad back, so that game becomes a little bit better. I think we definitely should be favourites for that game. But you know, same time that that reset completely and that start again is it means that means that how it's going to affect teams you don't know. Uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, who knows what they're going to do? They probably were thankful for the for the stoppage in terms of their momentum. You know, they were on a bit of a slippery slope, so for them to kind of reset and get going. It'll probably help them out. Same as Leicester City. Leicester City were in a little bit of a free fall. We're eight points behind them, which isn't impossible with the uh, with the games that we've got remaining. So who knows? But yeah, glad that the FA Cup's looking like it's coming back. Glad that the, and obviously that the Premier League coming back. We are in full planning mode to make sure we've got watch alongs and everything ready for you. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. And that'll be it for me today. Um, again, like I said, Joe Smith at 10 o'clock tonight. We'll be on Mr. Stephen Allison's channel for the rundown.